The past 24 hours have been quite eventful for the crypto community. Not only has Bitcoin now surpassed 35,000 for the first time since May of 2022, but we are getting lingering insights into the potential approval of a spot ETF managed by the world's largest asset manager, BlackRock. Not only are US federal courts now forcing the SEC to re-review their decision on Grayscale's Ether spot ETF, but a clearinghouse firm underneath the Nasdaq has potentially listed BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF trust already in a sign of potential upside coming in a sign that there could be serious political pressure to get this kind of ETF up and running as soon as possible. And guess what, folks, all these factors are accumulating together to create a really interesting trade opportunity with Bitcoin, especially in a high interest rate environment. As for why exactly do I believe that? Well, because Bitcoin is not a stock or a bond, which are extremely affected by policy from the Federal Reserve, which has been the main reason so many companies have lost value and gone bankrupt over the past three years. Small businesses are struggling. Geopolitics is struggling. Banks are struggling. Everybody is struggling over the past two years to maintain a profit or to remain under control. And that is exactly why stock market returns have been so hard to come by for retail investors following the boom of the pandemic. And this right here is what is creating an opportunity for alternative assets like Bitcoin. Although the price action might not suggest it, there is an underlying value that Bitcoin provides as a safe haven against the volatility of markets today. Yes, Bitcoin has a lot more volatility than a stock or a bond, similar to a lot of the other cryptocurrencies like Ether, Solana, or Cardano. But that doesn't mean the asset in and of itself doesn't have any value. Because over the past decade, as you can see by this very clear chart, the fluctuality of Bitcoin during its bull market as well as its bear market has been suppressed pretty significantly. As a matter of fact, interest rates from July 2010 to July 2019 went up by more than 300 basis points. And in the time, Bitcoin gave us a return north of 10,000%, which obviously destroys any other form of asset. Now, since the pandemic started, we haven't seen a 10,000% return, and that's because the price of Bitcoin is already now very high and peaked at almost $66,000 in 2021. And this right here, in my opinion, is exactly what makes crypto and Bitcoin so appealing from an investment and trading perspective for those who want to gain exposure to something not tied to the financial markets. Bitcoin doesn't have a cash flow statement, it doesn't have a balance sheet, neither does it have a revenue stream. Nobody's looking at the PE ratio of Bitcoin or the management team that could potentially send the company under Bitcoin to array. Instead, Bitcoin is an asset in a limited supply that can be used to not only perform financial transactions, but also speculate and hedge against macroeconomic forces. That doesn't mean Bitcoin is never going to go down. It always will have drawdowns like anything in the financial markets. But those drawdowns have a very predictable nature since at least the inception of this technology in 2010. And as you can see, this kind of predictability is extremely rare in any other form of asset, whether it be a stock a bond or even a CD. Throughout each cycle from 2012 through 2016 and obviously through 2020, there's been an average drawdown of Bitcoin anywhere from 70 to 84 percent and then a very slow and volatile rally up back to the all time highs. And although this chart at the bottom is not updated for what's going on today in 2020, 
23, the path being followed right now is extremely close to the charts above. Yes, although interest rates have an effect in the ability for people to leverage their positions and borrow for Bitcoin, it doesn't have an inherent effect on the Bitcoin asset on the blockchain. And that is why this asset is rallying so far this year instead of what's been going on with small caps and the more speculative stocks, which are down more than 5% on average. And the best part is that not only are the technicals and the cyclicality aligning with a bullish case for Bitcoin over the next few years, but even the fundamentals are improving with something like a spot Bitcoin ETF getting closer to getting approved, which would allow many retail investors to gain exposure to Bitcoin without having to even touch opening a crypto account. The SEC in the short term is playing games, and that is really obvious because that's what the government likes to do. But underlying asset managers like BlackRock, which essentially run financial markets in the US, are showing signs of supporting this new blockchain technology, which in the next decade or so can help with financial transaction improvements, but also in the short term allow a lot of investment hedging opportunity. Some important catalysts are now lying ahead of us with something like the SEC's review of the Grayscale Ether ETF due within the next one and a half to two months, as well as the BlackRock DTCC filing, which just got noticed on. Along with the BlackRock ETF, which is allegedly already registered by the clearinghouse for the NASDAQ. And guess what? If you don't want to own Bitcoin to take advantage of some of these catalysts, you have companies like Coinbase that are publicly traded that, in my opinion, can also perform equally as well to Bitcoin because of their beta exposure to stocks since their public IPO in 2021. As a matter of fact, it's pretty rare to find companies in the software space that are so profitable during certain times in the market and then unprofitable in other times, like we saw over the past two years. This resulted in actually a underperformance of this stock compared to the price of Bitcoin since its peak in 2021, resulting in the company now trading at a price to free cash flow of around six and a half with a balance sheet that is much stronger than any other competitor in this space, including obviously something like Binance. With gross margin sitting at 80%, as well as a price to book of only three and a half, the financials of Coinbase are very strong. It's only a matter of waiting until the next bull market cycle to begin and expand for Bitcoin that will result in more trading volumes as well as increased subscription and service revenue. And given the charts we just looked at, there's a high likelihood that the trend for Bitcoin is now solidified towards the upside no matter what you think about cryptocurrencies or blockchain technology. As usual, folks, let me know your thoughts on the situation down in the comments section below. Do you think right now is an opportune time to be invested in Bitcoin, no matter what the critics say? Or is this a time to stay on the sidelines and watch the market tear itself apart? Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.